Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to another Saving Your Disaster. And let me tell you, this is a disaster. This is a disastrous disaster. Like, what happened here? You've got vampires, you've got your unique units, but it's turn 99, and you've got one third the science of Arabia. Now, I can tell you what went wrong here. And it's actually a really, really simple thing. You spawn next to Arabia. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but that's usually a death knell for a campaign. Also, what are you doing with catapults? I don't know how long you've had this catapult. Literally never build this unit unless you somehow like actually get this tech for free on like turn 20. Then maybe you can build catapults. Catapults are not good, okay? They die easily. They're only good for upgrading into bombards and saving a little bit of production if you have a good amount of gold. As Alexander, you want to use battering rams. Battering rams, because they give your units full damage against walls. You want to use siege towers. You don't want to use catapults, okay? Get this in your head. Never, ever, 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 ever use catapults. Now this player was, uh, was going for a domination victory. And it looks like their capital is Pella. All right, let me tell you what went wrong here. Okay, your mistake here was uh, was spawning next to Arabia and trying to attack them. Um, you just, you're never gonna kill Arabia, I'm sorry. Um, they have way too much science, way too much faith. It's very hard to kill Arabia. Someone like Korea is your neighbor because they have a lot of science, but they never build any units. They're easy to kill. Arabia, impossible. Now the thing is, the one grace we have here is Arabia has no military and we do have the money potentially to get a siege tower in the not too distant future. But the problem is siege towers are actually worse than battering rams. So the fact that you've unlocked siege towers is bad because what you wanna do is you wanna break the wall so the city can't shoot you anymore, but he's already got medieval walls and the siege tower doesn't let you t tear down the walls. Um, yeah, you're just, <laughs> you're straight done. There's no way you can continue this game as a domination game as it currently stands. What you have to do is you went for the warlord's throne, which makes sense here, right? But let me really ask you, why would you get Warlord's Throne if you can't actually kill cities? Like it does nothing for you. What you should have done this game is recognize that you're not going to kill your neighbors early. Sometimes you gotta just accept that you didn't get a good enough start compared to your neighbor. You didn't find them early enough. You weren't close enough to them. You couldn't get a military out and you're just not gonna kill them early enough for it to matter. And instead what you gotta do is say, all right, I'm gonna macro. I'm gonna get as many cities as I can and I'm gonna tech hard. Now, your building, like your, your pin plan here is also kind of weird to me. Like, why are we in a domination game? Why are we building an aqueduct? Why are we building industrial zones? Why are we building these things? These, th these are not the pins of a domination game. There's, there's like two things you care about in a domination game. Production now. So like, look, look how unimproved your tiles are. You're working zero improved tiles in Methane. You're working zero improved tiles in Hatton. Now, fair enough, those are newly-ish settled cities. I can forgive that. You're working one improved time tile in Troas. Sorry, is that is that broken? Two improved tiles. You're working a cattle tile and a plantation. These are not production tiles, okay? These are not production tiles. Your capital has room for five mines and you have zero, all right? This is your production center. This is where you make things, all right? Why aren't you making them? You got vampires, which is cool. Problem, as far as I can tell though, is that you never used your vampire castles. Um, you do have good campuses. You can you can recover from this game very, very, very well, um, but it basically it requires you to immediately re-gear your entire economy towards settler production and pray that Arabia doesn't kill you. It's literally the only thing that you can do is just start producing settlers in every city and then maybe builders from one to try to get these other cities improved. Like Hatton, I would maybe see not going for a settler instead of builder in here. But yeah, you just, you gotta settle all this land. It's the only way you recover from this game. And this land is terrible, terrible for uh, for campuses. But yeah, um, so what went wrong here? <sighs> well, it really looks like you you just didn't hit them early enough. Like you can have, you're, you're three techs away from your unique unit as Alexander. So like you can go mining, grab yourself a couple of early game units, kill some barbs, immediately tech bronze working, see if you find iron, settle the iron, and then by the time you improve the iron, you should be ready to spam out high pass. You should really be hitting someone with high pass pists, turn 40, turn 50. That's when you should be hitting them. You've got six charges on Hercules. Now this is good. This is really good. Oh my God, you also, why haven't you got apprenticeship yet? This is like the most important production tech in the game. It doubles your output from mines. It doubles your surplus from mines. Mines give you plus one production. With apprenticeship, they give you plus two. 
Ergo, it doubles the surplus that your mines give you. This is just a huge mistake. So, yeah, there's a lot that just went wrong here. So what I would do, I'm going to play for a few minutes. Yeah, okay. Builders, 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 builders. In fact, capital. Anywhere that takes more than 20 turns on a settler, I'm going to produce builders instead of settlers until we completely fill out all this land. You've got land up here. You've got land down here. You've got land here. Use your land, okay? That's how you win the game in Civ 6. You use your land. All right, um, one of... The important reasons that you settle a city coastally is so you can get a harbor. Now I know this is a lake, but it's still a coastline. It still has fish. So you've settled both of these cities in a place where the, they just can't get good harbors. So that means that the potential of these cities is just severely reduced because this is actually a sea. This isn't even fresh water. Look at, look at this housing. You want, you want the harbor here for the housing and stuff. So you've, you've Crippled both of these cities by placing them here, unfortunately. Both of these cities should have been moved down one tile. Methane should have been settled here. I know you were looking for this thing, and I guess you can get the aqueduct. I can maybe excuse Methane because of the aqueduct, but Hatton absolutely should have been settled one tile south on the Rhine. Oh no, you can't because of Mogadishu. I guess you made the best of a bad situation, but I would have just settled my city like somewhere else. I don't know. Yeah, man, Mogadishu actually kind of screwed you here. I guess this was like the best you made of a situation, but you never want to block your, your harbor in, in a non-freshwater city with, with a reef because now you're, both your harbors are just terrible. The one saving grace is the fact that you have Hercules. Um, we can use Hercules to get like districts up in certain cities. Pointless to go for military engineering because you could just boost that with an aqueduct. So your, your army composition is bad. Your settling pattern is bad. There's a lot of bad stuff going on here. And... This is, you know, you gotta be careful where you plan your farm triangles because now there's uh, there's niter there. Three charge builder, harvest, get another builder, and then we can start laying out some mines here. You should always be asking two questions when you're going for domination. How do I get more gold in production? And how do I get more cities? And in this particular game, the getting more cities is settling. Because you can't, you can't kill this guy right now. So don't worry though, don't worry. You can still win in the late game. Remember, there's always the late game. Early domination is hard, right? It's hard to do. So I forgive you for messing it up. I'm still gonna follow your plan because it's it's a it's a moderately reasonable plan. Like it's not terrible. It's it's a good plan. Like realistically, if I'm being if I'm being fair to you, this isn't the worst like district plan I've ever seen. And we do have Hercules where we can get both of these up nice and quick and then start pumping out settlers to uh recover the game. Oh, you're also in a golden age, monumentality. Why would you go monumentality when you have no faith? Huh. This doesn't make any sense at all. But look how much more production the city has now just by placing down three more mines we're up to 19 production and we're going to go higher because we're not finished mines people they are the most important part of the game mines are literally if you want to be a better Civ 6 player only build mines for one game and see how that affects things i'm not even joking when i say that i mean literally load up a game of Civ 6 and build nothing like improvement wise you can obviously build districts and stuff but build nothing other than mines and see how your performance is compared to your normal games and then you'll get a real appreciation for how important mines are boom apprenticeship up now look at these tiles. Look at these tiles, dude. We're up to 27 production. I've nearly tripled the production in this city in six turns just by getting builders. All right, I really want you to appreciate that. I have, again, let me let me repeat what I just said. I have tripled the production of this city in six turns by building builders and mines. Hammer that shit home. Now, if we talk about settling over here, obviously we would like to claim this science campus tile, right? So there's two positions we can do that from. The advantage of this position is that we can get this campus earlier. And this will actually be a plus four campus, which is a big deal. Um, so we would get that earlier. The advantage of this position is that we're on a Plains Hill and we get extra production early. I think I'm gonna live without the Plains Hill and get this campus up sooner. Because we just need to tech, 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 tech. Settlers on the way. Boom, straight for universities. Only way we dig ourselves out of this hole is technology and production. Alexandria Troas, plus four industrial zone, slapped down immediately constructed by Hercules. Boom, now the city ha was making 5.4 production, is now making 8.1. Methane, boom, buy the tile, come into the city, place the industrial zone, click, click, immediately finish the industrial zone. Not quite as good, admittedly, it's only plus one, but it's a step up. All right, let's improve the niter over here. That'll boost rifling and give the city an actual productive tile. I need to start thinking about where my vampire castles are gonna go. We want to look for really high production. There's a good vampire castle right here. So I'm going to pop it right there. I know this is already a good tile in of itself, but being able to boost my capital is insane. Right, there's mathematics. Cool. And we have feudalism, so we can get even more builder charges, right? More builder charges means more mines, right? Big deal. Huge deal. Plug in limes. Uh, you're 
Playing oligarchy? No, 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 no. No, we're going classical republic here. Settler production, builder charges, plus one production. This is what we call the power hard, okay? The settler card, the builder card, and the production card. This is the power hard government, right? This means we are turtling. We are not going to war. We are not engaging in diplomacy. We are not being aggressive. We are doing one thing, and that is increasing the size and quality of our empire as fast as humanly possible. Now this city, I can't afford to get a builder in here, all right? I'm just gonna go straight for campus and walk a builder from somewhere else. I may even purchase a builder. Right? I might use faith for that, but this city has to just get the campus producing. Okay, of course he's denouncing me. He hates me. It's understandable that he hates me. Boom. One point in Anshan, all right? I'm on 38.6 technology. I put one point in Anshan, I'm on 41.8. Efficient use of your envoys is massive. Another settler finished, we'll send that one up to the north. Time for a vampire castle, boom. Settlers are now being produced in five turns in the capital. Methane, mine, boom. 11 production in this city now. This is an actual city now, all right? 10 turns for an aqueduct is reasonable, boom. Industry on the dies. Dies, not very good, doesn't matter. Makes a good tile. That's the only thing that should matter to you is do I have good tiles? That's a question you should just continuously ask yourself. Are my tiles good? Don't worry about basically anything else except the question of are my tiles good? If you have good tiles, everything else will follow. All right, now that we have a builder in here, I think I'm gonna get another builder to send to Alexandria. Look at look at this mine, or, or vampire castle rather. 11 food, 12 production, all of that getting immediately put into the capital. Delicious. Another mine in Methane. Again, more and more production. We can harvest in here, finish the aqueduct immediately. Sure, we lose a productive tile. We don't care, we already got productive tiles. We're trading the production of this woods for the production on the uh, industrial zone from the aqueduct. And I think that's a fair trade. All right, another part of catching up in a in a bad game, a game that did not go well. Spies, get your spies. All right, we have the campus in here. Let's get the library, that's three science per turn. We're gonna be getting university soon, so we wanna be thinking about Anshan. Don't forget to improve your fishing boat tiles, right? When you compare these to land tiles, like if I put a farm here, this is three food and that's it. If I put a fishing boat on some fish, it's three food, one gold. It's a step up, right? It's just, it's just good. Always fishing boats, good. My God, you never even made your unique unit. I walked a scout onto a meteor and then got your uh, your heteroi unique unit for free. All right, a lot of mistakes. Some of them forgivable, some of them. Need to start thinking about our next vampire castle. Probably be up here somewhere. Looks like really good yields. Your exploration has been really good this game. Like you have really good map knowledge. I, I will credit you with that. Like you've done, a, you've done a great job exploring. Boom, drop a city right by the fish. Immediately, we could go campus in here if we wanted to. Not a bad move. It's a plus three campus right here. Cool, 95 gold, easy. We'll get a builder up here eventually. We have access to universities. Make sure you get your monuments as well. Those are really, really good. Really, really important. Monuments, they're very good. They're very important. Always get them if you can. Now that we have universities, let's pick up dams. And that's pretty much all we can do tech-wise for quite a while. Now it's just about execution, improving tiles, all that stuff. Get to work on the university in Pydna. We got a settler out of that city, which is working well for us. Now we need to make a decision about how we settle this. So you kind of want to look for the most amount of cities you can get, right? On good tiles that are worth settling. With good tiles, they can work with good district spots. So one way we can start this plan is, because this is a lot of coastline, if we look up reefs and we know that tech is gonna be important for us to complete our domination goals, we can spot two reefs, which means that we wanna put campuses adjacent to some or all, some or all of these tiles. So we know there's campuses going here. There's another good campus spot there. We know there's a good industrial zone here. Two niter tiles. These are also great tiles to work, especially in a desert city that normally won't be very good. So my guess for this city, would be we would settle on the coffee for the plus one culture, aqueduct in some direction, probably on the desert tile because it's less useful, industrial zone and then campus here. So that's this city planned. Now that we have a city planned, we can start to base our other cities off of the template of this city. Because we know every city has to be at least three tiles away. I know I'd like a city in range of one of these campus spots. So one, two, three, a city either on the truffles or beside the truffles. One of these two cities is valid or potentially this little triangle area. Any further out and I can't hit this campus and it, or it'll be too close close to this. So I'll probably settle on the truffles. Again, settle on a tile that is good. It has extra yields. This city will get the campus here. I'll probably get a harbor in this city. Again, trade routes, gold, science, and production. Your three main ways to get back into a game that you're losing. Now, if this city is placed, it'll inform the position of my next city. Closest city I can settle is right there, but I'm going to actually settle it right there. Now, these cities on the coastline are not going to ever be very good. 
that's something you have to accept. They're just never going to be amazing. But we do now have four cities planned over here with acceptable tiles, right? They've got good, good harbors or at least acceptable harbors, right? Plus three, plus three harbor is acceptable. Boom, settle coffee city, coffee cities online. Make sure we place the important infrastructure. We place the aqueduct, we place the campus. We get to work on the granary, the monument and the watermill. The order doesn't matter super much. Arguably the granary is the lowest priority in this city. Monument could be high priority because my culture is weak. And we'll get a builder sent over here as well to improve this city. Alexandria, Troas, probably going to be a builder spam city. It's not going to do much else for a while. We fully settled the north essentially. And we've got a constant stream of builders uh, heading over here to help. And a stream of settlers heading southeast to get this land going. Finally got a builder in Alexandria by the Latmus. So naturally we'll get the iron mine online. Again, production, science everything you want. A couple of spots we could put a decent campus on. I'm going to pop it on the marsh because that has potential cooperative power with my harbor and then I would just need one more district right here to get a plus three campus. Right, so this city only needs, so I can chop this tile. Mostly spending my gold on, um, on tile harvesting, like picking tiles to buy. Um, there's not much use for our gold aside from that and having the pick of the litter when it comes to chops is a pretty big advantage. Go ahead and faith by a builder over here. God, I wish you had the um, settle extra cities thing. You, you gotta be careful, right? Here's what happens with new players. They'll load into a game and they'll see like, oh, I'm playing Alexander. I'm gonna go for a domination victory. But you, you can't go into a game with that kind of mentality. What you have to do is like, you go into a game and say, I would like to go for a domination victory, but I'm gonna respond to the situation I'm in. And in this situation, you just had so much land to settle. Absolutely. Ancestral Hall um, was the play. Like, clearly, just obviously. You should have just been spamming settlers. And then once you have all your city spammed, you could just choose how you win. You have, to, you, have to, you have to respond to the situation you're in. Too often we just go into a game and we're like, I want to win by culture. And you, you kind of blindly go for it, even though the culture game isn't viable in that particular situation. Boom, we have dams now. I am going to stop off to pick up my dam in Alexandria Troas. And, and here's another little trick, right? I just recently settled uh, Phippolis and I want to grow this city quickly. So I'm going to harvest this food, but I'm going to wait until the city hits exactly two population. And I'll explain why when we get there. Harvest, boom, campus done. Now we have a plus four campus in here. That's four more science. A single builder. A single builder has brought this city up to 15 production, right? Builders, important. Get them. A lot of people think vampires are incredible because they're really good at fighting. Vampires are incredible because they give you this, the vampire castle. It's literally the game saver when it comes to getting a really, really strong capital that you can spam anything you want out. And it just so happens that it settlers this game that we want. All right, we want this dam as fast as possible. So I'm gonna steal productive tiles from nearby cities because the sooner I get this dam, the lower the chance it has of flooding and destroying already existing infrastructure. Now I'm gonna make a save here uh, so I can demonstrate this to you. Now, if I were to chop this food right now, okay? That 70 food would first apply the 1.3 food, okay? That, that little bit of food would go in here, right? And instantly make the city two population. Then the overflow food would stack all the way up and have the city would be one turn away from growing to three population. So let me show you that, right? I harvest, you can see we've overflowed. We're now two population and we're now one food away from growing to uh, three population. Now what's happened here is pretty simple. When I chopped it first, took the food it needed to grow the population, and then it filled up the bar and then discarded the excess. So we've actually lost, I think because growing to three population takes like 30 something food, we've actually lost a significant amount of that food chop. Now, if I end the turn here, I just shift entering, the city will be three population like next turn or whatever. But instead, if I go back now and load up that save I made, um, I'll be able to show you getting the city to four population instead of two. So you always want to chop. The timing your your food chops is important. Now you don't have to do this for every food chop. It's only when you know that the overflow from the food chop is enough to grow a population and another one, which it will be. So we're going to harvest here to get that and then go for the university. Tech is already hitting 62. Hercules died, but I don't care. So. Two population city, we do the same harvest thing. Now the, pop, now the city's a pop ahead and it's gonna grow again. You see that? We're gonna hit four population next turn. It's incredible, it's incredible. And don't forget, you get extra yields from having more population. You can work more tiles. Your citizens inherently produce a little bit of science and culture. In a coastal city with no fresh water, 
Granary and Monument. That's the order. Granary Monument, right? That's that's the most efficient long-term return on investment order. It's not always the right choice, but it's the most efficient long-term investment build order for a coastal city is Granary than Monument. Boom. Settle on another luxury. We are in a dark age, but that's okay. Granary, Monument. Monument Granary is more short term, but we, we're playing for the long game because we're trying to win. We're starting to finish some universities. So we're going to go to level three envoys with Anshan. So we get an extra two signs from every single one of those universities. Let's buy both of these Niter tiles for Amphipolis. So we can get the city up to, you know, 10 production on a relatively new city is pretty good. I would say about five production an era is like a city doing well. So like my, my capital, right? If we imagine, we, we've just ticked over into the Renaissance. So around about, you know, ancient era, somewhere between 5 and 10 production is pretty good. Classical era, 10 to 15 production is pretty good. Medieval era, 15 to 20 production is pretty good. Renaissance, 20 to 25 is pretty good. That's like a benchmark for an okay city. Because that would mean, for example, in the Renaissance era, or yeah, it would take you, it would take you 15 turns to build a bank on average if you were to stick to that rule of thumb. So anything higher than that is better and anything lower than that is bad. So for example, in the, um, in the modern era, I think that's six times five. So you'd want to have, you know, somewhere between 30 to 40 production, which would mean you would build your buildings in about 10 to 15 turns. That's the kind of benchmark you want to be looking for. You want to be building the buildings of the era that you're in, in about 10 to 15 turns. It's not a perfect benchmark that you should follow 100%, but it's, it's a, it gives players a rough idea. That's kind of a rule of thumb that I follow. Not super hardcore. Again, it's not something I strive exactly for. It must be this, but that's kind of how I measure whether or not I'm doing well. So you can see here, the university is of era, or at least the previous era. And it's taking me about 15 turns to build it. So I'm feeling pretty good. I would like to get that down to 10, ideally. How do I do that? Well, lumber mills. Step in here, pop a lumber mill there. Now we just unlocked a important card, the Craftsman card. 100% industrial zone adjacency bonuses is almost always better than urban planning because more production in one city is better than a little bit of production in every city because I can use this city to actually help those other cities. Okay, pop down another lumber mill in Alexandria by the Latmus. Another university, oh, it should have gone down. Why didn't it go down? Yeah, it went down by two turns. It was 16. Now it's 15. So now I'm feeling pretty confident about this city. It's pretty low population. We'll want to get a granary in here before we go for the university because this city needs to grow before it works more tiles. So you always keep an eye out, right? Get your granaries when you're starting to hit pop limit for the city. Problem is coastal cities pretty much immediately hit that pop limit. So that's why you always go granary first. The city has hit four population, which means it can place its second district, which of course will be an industrial zone. We won't be going for the industrial zone now, but we're just going to place it to lock in its price. Boom. We got our first university. We're making 83 science per turn. We're catching up ever so slowly. Oh, look, we're working on improved tiles in here. You know what that means? It means we get a builder. We've got a university in Methane as well. How badly do I care about this workshop? Not terribly, but it is only 10 turns. And it would significantly improve the production of this city. And I don't really have a plan for this city other than anything else. Now let's have a look at the great people. All right, so Isaac Newton is gone. That's bad. We wanted Isaac Newton. Hypatia, also gone. Also bad. And there isn't a very good great scientist coming for a very long time. We're in fact on the industrial era great scientists. I happen to know that most of the industrial era great scientists aren't very good. There is one really good one in classical, which is Hypatia. There's one really good one in Renaissance, which is Isaac Newton. There's one really good one in modern, which is Albert Einstein. And then it's really just Carl Sagan after that. All those other ones kind of are like, you know, what's it like runner up prizes. They're just not as good as the raw science. They're just not as good. So I know I don't care about actually claiming any of these great scientists for a while. So I can just work on things like workshops. I could even, instead of getting workshops, I could just get more builders in here and send them out to improve these cities, which I think I will do because Alexandria Troas is busy building a dam and not producing builders for me. Right. That is our fourth city settled in the desolate plains. Now we have to plan out these cities. These cities are worse, right? They're really, really bad, but they're still cities. Cities produce you money. Cities produce you culture. Cities produce you science. So the more cities you have, the better off you are. It's a very, very, very simple calculus that you have to do in the game. Now, this is the only fresh water that's available to me aside from this. So I'll pop you right there. Now, when it comes to tundra cities, you want to look for um, forests that you can use for lumber mills. 
and then you want to look for good harbors so like there's a good harbor right there because it's adjacent to two bonus luxuries or bonus resources so then i could just pop down a city center there and i know hey look it's a city it's not an amazing city but it's a city the city that will do the job that i ask it to and then the final city that i can fit in here is just right right on the edge so there's going to be three more cities in my empire you notice how i'm spacing these ones out a little bit more it's because these ones aren't as good the further generally the better your cities are the closer you want them clustered together like the better the quality of the land is the worse the quality of the land is you want to spread them out a bit just because you know the, the land isn't very good and you want to just get a sort of claim on that land without having to cram quite as many settlers on it. Whereas the land over here was still pretty good, so I, I was fairly densely packed. I have a governor title, let's go ahead and get Liang. We'll plug her into Methane so we can get extra build charges. That extra build charge adds up over the course of a game. Boom, Niter improved. The city now has a production tile. We got the dam in Alexandria Troas, and now we're up to a plus eight industrial zone. This city has incredible production as well, just like our capital. It would be good to get the diplomatic quarter in here, purely purely for the extra envoys. Envoys are really, really good, so I'm gonna place that. Um, I'd like a trade route in here. It's probably gonna come in the form of a harbor to place that pin down to remind myself. But what I need right now in spades is builders. And the reason why I'm deprioritizing uh, getting my diplomatic quarter is because I don't have uh, a whole bunch of scientific city-states that I need to build a relationship with. The only scientific city-state in the map that I can build a relationship with, I have already got one with. But this might seem a bit silly what I'm doing here, but I'm, I'm or, or, or rather it might seem kind of intuitive the way I would normally do things. Generally, I won't harvest flatland tiles in coastal cities because uh, you're better off with a lumber mill because the city is just going to be bad without it. All right, so this city's lacking a granary and a monument. So I'll just buy them in there to get it going a bit more. Need a builder up here as well. Sometimes it's okay to spend your money on things you wouldn't normally. We are struggling a bit for cash, but it's not going to be a permanent problem. Let's queue up our last two settlers in Pella. More universities. Another example of a city where I would consider against harvesting flatland tiles is Hatton. There's no mines around here, so I'm going to improve these um, these woods instead of just harvesting them. Right, so what is the point of this city? The point of this city is to hold this land and just be useful and get things that I may not have considered something I want. So for example, I could get like theater squares, I could get wonders, I could get builders, but the main goal of the city is just to exist because by existing, cities generally give you culture and science not much now let's be fair it's not much but it does exist you are getting something from them uh, culture i don't want the culture in this city this will probably be a culture city over here so i'll just put a plantation there now here's a nice little potential for a farm triangle right there you had it up here, but I'm going to put it down here because I would like this city to grow more because it has Pingala who scales off of the city's population. So if I can get a bit of food in here, great. Same logic, I'm going to be going for the uh, granary in here. Is this city settled off of fresh water? Why is it, uh, what's going on here? Five water, I guess Pamakala gives fresh water, does it? But for sure, absolutely, we're going to be getting a theater square over here later on in this city. Again, remember, 15 turns to build a tier one building on a relatively weak city is quite good, right? Because that means the city's on pace for, for how it how it is doing, right? Faster is better, but the city's on pace for where, where it should roughly be in its development cycle. Do you know what I mean? It's just not a very strong city. We have diplomatic service now, so we can get to work on spies. Let's head towards mercantilism. I need to think about my tier two government. Probably be Merchant Republic. It's like the default go-to. Although that said, monarchy is a lot better than it used to be. I know Merchant Republic has its appeal though. Harvest the marsh, force the city to grow. I was felt safe harvesting that one because I didn't think it would cause too much of an overflow. It's important not to just blindly follow the rules of thumbs that I that I kind of hand out. You have to understand the whys and the wheres and the and, and the exact particulars. So let's talk about uh, Aani. Okay, this is going to be a cultural city because I'm going to be making use of the wine bonus. So now we need to plan a cultural city, which means we want a theater square for sure. And if you want a theater square. You almost certainly want an entertainment complex adjacent to it. And then you almost certainly would like to get something like the Bolshoi Theatre in here. But we're just going to settle with this. That's all the city is ever going to build. And we just want to position this now, this entertainment complex, to get as many amenities from my other cities as possible. And it looks like this tile right here, right next to the Oasis, actually hits a ton of my cities. It hits nearly five cities. So that's a 
seven, eight amenities coming from a single district there, which is huge. For you. And then we can just fill in the blank with a theater square and boom, we're done. The city is planned. It never has to do anything other than this and it's still useful. Oh, I forgot to tell you, by the way, I've been pretty much beelining industrialization this entire time because it's like the mid to late game version of apprenticeship. It gives you a plus one production on all your mines. So all that production we invested into building mines will be further rewarded. Actually, do you know what? This might be a really good wine city. Yeah, I think it is actually. Because I'm, I'm already going to get a plus four theater square from placing it next to Pamakala. So I think... I think I'll probably still do this in this city for the amenities. But I'm less worried about like, you know, things coming up the way I don't want them there. This isn't like a massive priority for me anymore, basically. And since we're going with um, Merchant Republic, getting our diplomatic quarter now is a, is a higher priority. Because diplomatic, the uh, Merchant Republic government has quite a few... Uh, things that scale off of messing around with um with city states because it has um oh god what's the word i'm looking for it has two diplomatic policy cards and there's a lot of sort of policy cards that interact with city states around this time of the game like for example raj um this one merchant confederation we've also got Vissel bank and machiavellianism there's a ton of interactions there that we can take advantage of boom farm boom farm farm triangle and you want to have a few farm triangles in your empire this particular one not the greatest one but you know a couple of farm triangles is is worth having to give your cities just that little bit of a boost of food all right let's go ahead and get the wine up in here so now the city's getting a 20 percent culture yield boost which is great. It's going to scale off of that theater square. Sometimes it's worth it to harvest marsh in these situations to force the city to grow. And then it can work more tiles. Especially when it's on like a luxury. It's a great time to harvest marsh. Now I know this is the only real productive tile in this city. But I'm still going to harvest it in order to get the granary up. Because that'll allow the city to work more tiles and just develop faster. Jesus, it looks like nobody's actually grabbed any heroes this game. What is going on? I don't know, but I could, I could get Sinbad if I wanted to. And I actually will. No, maybe the AI just never just never did anything with heroes. I don't understand that one. Bit weird. I guess someone has claimed some. The Khmer have claimed a couple. 28 turns on a university is very, very slow and not good. We definitely want this city to be going faster on that. Now we've got a bit of a cash problem, which stems from the fact that we're paying for this huge army. Um, but we had a nice reserve and we're picking up Sinbad too to help out with that. So we don't have to worry too hard about that. We will want to get some trading districts up soon for the trade routes and gold to sustain this empire. But it also means that um, things like fishing boats are now going to be a priority for me because fishing boats are worth a lot of gold. Let's make sure we work that tile for the gold. Excellent. All right, we got an absolute rake of builders from Metane. Now we need to start thinking about what our next steps are for this city. I definitely feel like the commercial hub is the right next move. It'll give me a little bit of passive gold income as well as more trade routes. Always organize your trade routes by gold and then look for the best gold trade route you can get. Especially when you're in a, in a fairly mid to late game situation like this where everyone's empires are fairly well established and you're not too worried about barbarians murdering you. All right, I'm waiting on the vampire castle here. Now that I have positive gold, I'm going to buy both of these tiles so I can get them improved and I'll get a builder or two. First things first, the city will get to work on the harbour. We will be getting the uh, campus in the not too distant future, but harbour is good to work on first. Gold, 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 gold. You always got to be kind of flexible to what your empire needs and not necessarily what your overall goal is. And right now my empire needs gold. Lovely, there is Sinbad and exploration. So let's plug in Merchican Republic. Barely changes our government policy at all, except it opens up a wild card and a diplo card slot. Let's plug in Merchant Confederation for that gold. And now I feel fairly comfortable should have had campus adjacency plugged in a long time ago, but I just didn't really have the room for it. God damn it, did I? I forgot to take out colonization. Right, um, let's get a cheap civic. I always forget to do that. But yeah, now we have campus adjacency and we're making 133 signs compared to the 182 of Arabia. We are 11 techs behind, but this game wasn't over, right? Again, I think the biggest lesson that the player who failed this game is, right? If there is land, the game is not over. The second lesson is don't blindly play in a direction that your civilization tells you to okay alexander yes he is an incredibly good domination civ but that doesn't mean you have to sacrifice every possible other opportunity in the game to go for domination the third lesson is absolutely never ever declare war on arabia <laughs> okay just don't do it it will never unless you know exactly what you're doing the second those Mamluks appear, the second those crossbowmen appear, it's lights out for you. Unless you're an extremely experienced player who knows exactly how to rush someone 
on deity. Don't be afraid to play the long game. Get your empire up. Look, we're, I would consider this now with the fact that I haven't even built all of my universities. I haven't even built all of my campuses. I would consider myself as a player on par with Arabia. I'm going to catch him. I have more cities than he does. I have more land than he does. I'm going to be able to get aircraft and completely obliterate him. It doesn't matter that he's 11 techs ahead of me. If the 11 techs that he's ahead of me on, I don't care about because I have only researched the things that I personally know are going to help me win the game. Stuff like industrialization. In fact, actually, I want to go ahead and see. I want to actually show industrialization off. So I'm going to end, I'm going to end my turn here a couple of times. I just, just put this in perspective, right? City, 30 production, 31 production, 15, 10, 15, 20. Right, they're all around somewhere between 5 and 30 production. We end our turn, and now, now let's just go through our empire. Because this plus one production scales off of our population. It's one of the few things in the game that does. 35 production in the capital. 35 in here. 50, no, 20. 12. Nearly 20 in Pydna. Right? The amount of production that you get from these tiles is staggering. Anyway, yeah. Listen. Final, final lesson of this savior disaster. I, you could very easily transition this into a, into a science win from here. I guarantee it. Um, a, a science or a domination win. But yeah, the final lesson. Listen, build builders and build mines. Build builders and build mines. Research apprenticeship, research industrialization. Get your production. I love you all very much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.